thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come listen to us talk, and hopefully you get something uh, useful out of it. And uh, again, any any questions, myself and the rest of the team will be able to answer anything. So my name's Alan. Uh, it says Tyler Field, but it's Tyler Tiddley. Um I'm from Odyssey Wealth. That's uh, if I said I'm a regulated financial advisor, which kind of puts you in a different league to John down at the pub, who can give as much advice as someone can listen to, but it's not regulated. It's not kind of backed up by insurance. If something goes wrong, you've got recourse. Um, it's been quite a enthusiastic and complicated last two years. And for three years there, that's when the old uh, Crony period is said. But the last two years have kept us busy in the markets. Um, Ukraine war, uh, we thought that would be a kind of splash in the pan. Russia would meant to walk over there in a matter of weeks, what Russia thought. Uh, it's going on for, for ages. Um, Queen obviously passed away and uh, her son ascended last September. Uh, we got um, a Prime Minister compared to a lettuce. So I don't know if you guys were here where someone put a live stream of a, an iceberg lettuce and put a time next to it and a lettuce outlasted Liz Truss. Um, and that's uh, Putin still got his grip on European gas prices. So gas prices, again, that was the huge variable that impacted all the markets. Uh, beginning of last year and heading into winter. Um, and obviously that's why you saw crazy bills. Um, gas prices have come down, the futures are down, but they're still absolutely you know, twice or three times as much as where they were previously. Uh, Trump, the old Rwampi, he's still wearing his head whether you love him or hate him. He's still in the running. Um, they're doing absolutely everything possible to try and make him not run in 2024. But um, knowing him, you'll probably pull out a rabbit out of the hat and, and, and wear his head and be on the ballot. Uh, and that, that's basically what's, what's led to volatility in the markets. Um, it's actually been a very, very challenging last two years in the markets. From the beginning of 2022, the markets kind of took a very, very slow, uh, or not, not, not that slow, gradual movement down. Um, primarily because of, of a couple of things. The, the war in Ukraine was almost the catalyst, but it wasn't the main, main reason. The main reason was the back end of COVID, governments around the world uh, particularly in the first world, spent absolute billions, if you're not combining them all together, trillions on uh, the various handouts they gave people, the social supports, and the bailing out of businesses. And, and that's when the chickens eventually did have to come home and roost. And that, that's where they did come home. And, and that caused uh, the boogeyman to kind of, or the genie to pop out the bottle, but in, in terms of inflation. Um, I thought I'd do a bit of a, a quick quiz. Uh, you can probably hear I'm South African, so an easy way to kind of bring in the rugby topic. Uh, <laughs> can anyone know a company there that's found by a South African? Tesla. Tesla. Tesla, absolutely. Second question, which company had the, or has had the best stock market in the U US stock market performance today? Better. Sorry? Better. Better? It's had fantastic performance. The actual one is Monster Energy. Um, again, founded by a couple of South Africans, so just to, to bring up the rugby topic again. Yes. <laughs> Once you could have bought for a couple of pennies, or even uh, cents, uh, back end of early 1990s, and traded uh, as a, an FB office at about $52, $53. So that's about a 750,000 pound return. Um, again, as with any investments, things go up and down, um, and um, a lot of these ones, you would have experienced, they absolutely flew up in the last 10 years. They had a, a twilight era in, in COVID with uh, everyone moving to online working. And then these were last year impacted the most though. So you saw the likes of kind of uh, Zoom, the teleconference kind of uh, app and everyone used it, absolutely plummeted. Uh, Jack brought up Peloton. Peloton was the darling of the stock market at one stage last year, absolutely fell through the ceiling. Uh, Netflix as well. And decided to blow all their cash and making new films, and uh, eventually that they ran out of not technically money, but um, ran out of their subscriber base, jumping up every week. So that, that's basically the landscape we, we've been in. We've been in a rough kind of last two, three years. Um, but <laughs> essentially, this gives the bigger picture of why people do invest. Um, I don't know if you can see it at the back, but this, this, this map starts in 1956 and the reason it starts has no particular one. We could go back to 1920. The graph is the exact same shape. This just shows what a pound is worth in 1956 in the UK. Um, 
pretty similar to the, the start of the space race with Sputnik being, being launched. Um, and then what it does show is stuff happens. Stuff happens back in the day, stuff happens today, stuff's going to happen in the future. And if you kind of take the view of, I'm not going to invest now because it doesn't look like a great opportunity or things might happen or, you know, the latest conflicts in the world is uh, Gaza, Palestinian, Israeli conflict, that potentially has a huge chance of spilling over and kind of making the Middle East a, a melting pot like it was in the early 80s when, you know, there were civil wars being raged from Lebanon. Jordan, uh, Syria, and things like that. So uh, basically, what, what this kind of shows you is there's probably never a good time to invest when you're looking at purely from an emotional point of view. Um, but what investing does do is make sure your kind of money is keeping up to date with inflation. And so if you put your money in the bank or kind of an overnight rate, we'd call it 19.56 a pound. Uh, up until the end of 2022, your pound would have been worth 32 pounds, uh, or sorry, 56 pounds. That, that's tantamount to basically cash UK credit for your short-term bill. UK inflation would have been 32 pounds, so you would have just been above inflation. If you invested that same pound over the, you know, in the highest performing asset in the UK, UK small companies would have been worth over 10,000 um, pounds. So that just gives you an indication of what can happen in the investing. Doesn't mean it will always happen. But this is one of the perfect vehicles that you can use to put your money in to make sure your money is at least keeping up to date with inflation. So in terms of risk, you would generally say that's incredibly high risk. And as you're going down here, you're going lower and lower risk. Uh, for those of you who can't see, this is a world map of the, of the world stock markets. So if you added up all the world stock markets, it's about 57 trillion as of um, December last year, or uh, January this year. Um, the big block here is the US. Um, it's 59% of the world's stock market. So this isn't the economy. So at the moment, the U US is the biggest economy in the world, and China is kind of creeping up, and it's probably at some point going to overtake it. That's an economy. But when you look at the kind of size of the stock markets, China's stock market is um, over there. It's 4%. The UK is definitely hits way above its kind of uh, heights in terms of the world markets. It's, it's, again, 4%. And the likes of Germany, when you think of Germany, everyone compares Germany... German economy to be the kind of engine of Europe, their stock market is actually half the size of the UK. So that's an indication on global markets. People would rather invest in the UK as opposed to Germany. Um, and, you know, the market in terms of the US is obviously far bigger and it, it dominates both the stock markets as well as the bond markets. Um, can anyone take a guess if we had to overlay Apple as a single company, how big that would be on, on this? Just a wild guess. So if we took Apple at this period of time, it was basically within $100 million of the size of the U entire UK stock market. So Apple as a single company was about 4% of the world's stock market. Um, down now since the end, end of last year, but um, just goes to show. Uh, and that, that's kind of a blessing and a curse for Apple, because has Apple peaked? Um, you know, has the appetite for Apple in China? Is that going to kind of just to have, have the same impact as they've had in Europe. The likelihood is not. Uh, people in China are probably going to steer towards buying Chinese phones um, moving forward, because um, Apple's not going to be the best moving forward in, uh, with any technology uh, people catch up. Um, the theme of these things is generally, you know, you're on a journey and how do you prepare for the journey? And I always, there used to be a, an advert for this and a car maker saying you kind of bought the ticket, enjoy the ride. You are on a journey financially, and it's important to kind of make sure you put some ground rules in place to build a solid foundation. So a couple of questions you kind of want to make sure you're doing is, are you headed in the right direction? Um, do you have a destination in mind? And that's, that's kind of critical things that clients often say to us, or we, we ask clients, say, what, do you, what do you do? What is your goal? What is your objective? Um, and, and mostly if you're in working age, it's, it's always, ah, oh, we want to retire. Um, and I always kind of preface that, okay, what are you going to do in retirement? Or what is your ideal retirement look like? And a lot of people say, ah, oh, I just want to do nothing. or want to sit on the beach drinking cocktails. And the reality is, once you've kind of sat on the beach drinking cocktails for six months, I did that for three months in Mozambique in the early 90s. It's, it's great for two weeks, but you do get incredibly bored after three weeks. Um, and uh, after you sober up, it's, you can't do it for, for much longer. So it's, it's about being realistic and putting a plan in place that's kind of meets your kind of financial 
beings, but also kind of that's going to be realistic. Um, you know, going around the world and traveling like that, yeah, that's absolutely a wonderful idea. Do you have the means or do you have the fortitude to kind of take the, the pain now in terms of sacrificing things now to put things in place for the future? Um, in terms of financial planning, uh, it's basically best to start yesterday. Um, unfortunately, we can't turn back time, but it's important to start as soon as you can. Um, there's the first pound you invest, uh, whether it's a property or buy to lets or in the stock market, is the pound that's going to make you the most money over, over the entire period. Um, and the only time to start is tomorrow or today. So it's best to do things as, as early as possible. In terms of the UK, you know, majority of us are probably not from the UK originally. There is a, a very, very good safety net in the UK as long as you've contributed to national insurance. So in the UK, you've got a state pension that if you pay national insurance for, for 10 years, the minimum you need to pay for, uh, you will get access to the state pension. Um, and the maximum or the required amount to get the full state pension is, is you need 35 years of national insurance contributions. So I've kind of front run this a bit. It's currently 10,600, but from April, if the triple lock, the government mechanism that they increased the pension by, um, is going to come, come in, it's going to be 11,500, which sounds like an, a decent amount. I know back home, the pension's about 30 quid a month. Um, so 20, uh, yeah, 11,500, it's got a couple, it's uh, 23,000. So that can give you a very, very good baseline in, in retirement. Um, the problem is, is these things up here, in terms of the age, the government wants to give you that check. Um, it used to be 60 for women, um, and that's kind of currently, in terms of the ages, 66, that's soon to be 67. And if you're born unlucky enough, I'm born August 79, so I fall into this category of 68. And I can almost, there's very few things in life that are certain death taxes, and the state pension aging is going to increase. So it's likely to go up to about 70. Um, and the, the reason is, it's pure mathematics. When the state pension came out in the UK, the average life expectancy was about 66. So the government wasn't expecting people to kind of live long in retirement and get the pension for that long. So a good base, but what it does demonstrate, if you want any kind of sense of luxury or sense of uh, exotic holidays and things like that, you're going to have to make your own provisions for that moving forward. Inflation is a, a word that many of us from Africa, particularly Zimbabwe, probably experienced <laughs> firsthand. Uh, and I still today don't think Zimbabwe is ever going to be topped off that top leaderboard of, of what inflation looks like. I think they even made the, the Rhineland German 1919 and inflation looks look ridiculous. Um, but it actually does have a, an impact on day-to-day on -day lives. I mean, the that's the thing I look at or going around shops, whether, you know, chopping at white rose or chopping at elves, you know, a can of Heinz baked beans, which is kind of Rolls Royce baked beans, is, is, is four pounds fifty for a, a set of four or five. Um, you know, that, that's kind of showing that the grocery, grocery shop, shops and the retailers are already pushing their, their gross margins down as much as possible. Um, because technically Aldi should be cheaper than white rose, but for things like essentials, it's not. Um, doubling of the price of pasta, um, and we're not even talking decent pasta, this is kind of just the, the bare bones pasta, it's gone up, you know, 90% in the last couple of years, um, you know, and you probably all feel it in your, your own pocket, you know, going to uh, or a grocery shop now and walking up to two baskets is costing you, or two packets or grocery bags costing you kind of 50 quid, um, and that's probably two or three meals um, moving forward. So one of the things you can do, uh, to offset this, and this is just another example of, of, of how inflation does impact, and this is, this is in the UK, so this isn't kind of even where governments are stripping currency and, and, and borrowing more money. A pint, four pints or two litres, just under over two litres of milk in 1920 cost 8p, and that same 8p today will get you 16 teaspoons. So I don't know how generous you are with your cups of coffee, but there's probably two cups of coffee worth of milk for, for the same amount. And the only way to kind of impact that is... Um, you look at uh, what we would deem as making use of uh, things like investments, uh, worst case scenario, making use of things like compound interest and savings accounts and things like that. Uh, Einstein had a great quote, you know, um, 
basically called compound interest, the eighth one of the world, and said those who understand it earn it, and those who are going to pay it. Um, and it's just basically giving you a rocket booster under your savings, your investments, to make sure they're growing and keeping in line with inflation. This is just a typical kind of linear graph of what kind of compound interest does. Uh, if you're getting interest uh, in the first few years, you can't really see any difference leading forward. But over as the years go forward, the purple is the kind of interest on the interest. So you, you imagine if investments work on the same basis, um, if you're getting, you know, the average return on the UK stock market or most stock markets, are, you know, uh, uh, first world markets or developed markets, it is between kind of say, safely six and a half to eight percent, um, and that that's the big thing that's going to make the the returns for you over the long term. Uh, I always put the slide in. What's the easiest way to get a million pound pension fund in the UK? Basically, start off when you were what, the day you were born. Um, if you invest at twenty five pounds a month, the way the tax system works in the UK, if you put in uh, twenty pounds, they'll gross it up by twenty to twenty five, so you get a twenty five percent return on. On your money, if you did that for 67 years, and you got an 8.5% uh, return on, on your investment, which again is probably indicative of, of, of developed markets returns over the years. You'd, you'd technically end up with a pension fund of a million pounds. So this is great for kind of long-term planning we do for for grand grandparents and kickstarting grandchildren's pensions and things like that. Um, but again, it's it's uh, one of those things not many people do. Um, we all kind of very busy. Uh, you know, almost like a, a swan on the, the river, our legs underneath are, are scuffering just to keep up to date kind of current prices and paying the mortgage and paying the school school fees and, you know, my, my kids have just started high school now and I didn't realise that they, they're going on two trips a year, it seems. Uh, that loan is kind of costing you a couple hundred quid a month. It's like, I'm like, they're not going on any more trips from next year. <laughs> but um, as, as humans, basically, we are conditioned. I mean, the, the most answer literature out there that's kind of has analyzed the stuff and, and how the human brain works, we basically are predisp predisposed not to kind of take the long-term view. Uh, you know, we kind of always looking for reasons not to do something that could benefit us in the long term, and we'd rather take the short-term kind of benefits. Um, there's a classic uh, study done when, you know, they, they analyzed thousands of people. The scenario was people walking down the street, we lost five dollars, we picked up five dollars. And if you picked up five dollars, the, the level of kind of happiness boost, the serotonin boost was about here. Uh, whereas if you lost five dollars, the kind of the dip you experienced was about five times worse than the, 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 boost, the benefits you got for picking up. So as humans, we didn't sign the kind of, you know, when we go back to prehistoric levels of sitting in the cave, we don't want to go after the same two tigers and things like that. But it, it's again, it's, it's how do we overcome that and put, a, put in place a a long-term plan that we know is kind of almost going to work. Um, investing, we know, over the long term, is going to work and benefit you. Again, this is just another thing about market growth over, over the period. Um, you know, if you took a, a dartboard and threw a dart at any world event in history, probably would have easily convinced people not to invest at that particular point. But what it does show, whether you invested in the UK winter of discontent in 86 or uh, you know, the Russian financial crisis in the late 90s where Yeltsin got drunk and nearly blew up the world. Um, UK triple A rating downgrade. There was, there's never a good time to invest. But even at the height of the pandemic, the markets dropped off about 35%. What did they do within a matter of months? They almost recovered all of that. So if you take that long-term discipline of investing, first you've got to start, then you've got to kind of be patient and, and let the investments work. The market does reward discipline. I'm not specific, specifying any particular market. Uh, Warren Buffett's basically probably one of the greatest investors in, in human history. His kind of anecdote is always back, America, back in the American economy. Um, and, you know, in the last 10, 15, 20 years, you probably wouldn't have been in a, in a better place investing directly in the American equities. But again, getting a global kind of exposure is always going to put you in a better stand. Um, and this kind of just leads on to that. Uh, this is a patchwork, a patchwork quilt of, of all countries. Well, not all, but, you know, a mix of, of different countries. And you can't kind of see it, but this is kind of each year is economy is each uh, year. And what it does show is there's no real pattern of who was the top performing economy or stock market in the year. Um, just prior to COVID, New Zealand, I think it was, was one of the top performing. 
And then as everyone kind of opened up from COVID, they kind of remained locked down and they were bottom forming. Um, America and the UK tend to just kind of hover around and sometimes they're the top performing, sometimes the lowest. But this just kind of indicates that, you know, if you're trying to pick winners, you're almost going to fail before you start because no one's got a crystal ball. Uh, there's been one Nostradamus in, in human history, there hasn't been two. So the, if you think yourself a fortune teller, you can out, out bet the market, and the likelihood is you're not going to succeed. So the best way to invest in the market is to invest across the board in a well-structured portfolio um, that you know over time is going to pay dividends. How do you build a solid foundation? Um, as with anything in, in life, you've got a whole array of options open to you at any one opportunity. We live in a, a time where your mobile phone is more powerful than the, the computer that went up in, in, in the space shuttle. Um, you can, you've got the world's encyclopedia at your fingertips. One of the things to bear in mind is these things have always been around. You know, in, in the 18 or late 1700s, it was tulips. We had a tulip mania where Sir Isaac Newton went bankrupt he thought he could beat the market jumping at the right time and jump out. But he jumped in and didn't jump out. He lost his, his share of integrity there. Well, across the board, regard is probably the most intelligent person to have ever lived. Build a plan and stick to it. Again, this is one of the things you need to do to kind of counteract the human emotion, to kind of say, oh, well, I'll leave that for today. I'll, I'll, I'll do it next week. Or, or, or the markets seem, seem a bit broken today. I want my money out. Um, don't be greedy, because that's the kind of fraudsters playground. Um, if it's um, too good to be true, the likelihood <laughs> is it is too good to be true. So at, at conferences I speak to, I often get the kind of questions about things like Bitcoin and, and altcoins, and Dogecoin and uh, various kind of investment schemes and that. Those things, whether they pan out or not, um, I don't kind of knock them. The likelihood is if, you know, for argument's sake, Bitcoin, if where they've got an investment kind of platform in America that they're trying to launch, and that gets the green light, Bitcoin might double overnight. Um, the likelihood is, though, you didn't spot Bitcoin when it was $1 or 13 cents, I think it was original. Uh, it's $33,000, $32,000 now. So it's very easy for us humans to kind of look at them and say, ah, oh, it's going to go up again, it's going to go this, jumping onto this. Whereas rather don't be greedy, go into something that's proven. If you want a bit of Bitcoin, you know, lob a couple hundred pounds in and, and, and have a bit of fun. But we would never recommend you building your kind of retirement plan to long-term future on, on anything that kind of hasn't been battle-tested. And that's the issue with, with Bitcoin. Um, it hasn't been battle-tested through a number of economic cycles. Um, you know, quantum computing is on the horizon. If, if that comes, then suddenly the, the, uh, the code and, and everything that you, you could use for Bitcoin could be solved overnight and you could use the, the asset base. So again, don't be greedy. Uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch to call the solid foundation. Uh, I think the common theme as well today has been, you know, we as financial advisors and investment managers and things like that are looking at kind of building wealth for the future. Um, I mean, you always have to caveat that with protecting what you have. And that's where life's kind of sand, wills, uh, 10 of mortgage of protection, jack the, the PMI. Um, those are kind of all the kind of arrows in your quiver that you need to kind of be able to draw on as and where you need it. Um, you know, if you've got kids, having a mortgage is brilliant, puts a roof over your house, but what happens if something happens to either of you, your husband and wife? Are you able to afford that mortgage if, if something happens? And that's where things like protection come in place, life cover, critical illness cover, income protection. Uh, Jack, I think one of your colleagues a couple of years ago mentioned that um, there are more rabbits that are insured in the UK than people have income protection, which is quite a scary thought. Where, um, you know, your income after your mortgage is your biggest, or your house is your biggest asset. Um, if you think about that over the lifetime, lifetime of you working, and so few people have been protected. Um, but that's just one of the kind of things you need to be aware of when building your kind of foundation, or building your financial plan is, yeah, you want the returns, you want the, the money to grow, but you've also kind of got to maybe look back in that cave you've been on over in your sheltering and say, okay, well, let's make sure that the roof is kind of fine if it does rain. Uh, fine print, as with any investments, uh, we obviously are regulated by the FCA in terms of what we do. Uh, as with any investment, they always go up. 
I'm telling you, they will always go down at some point. And it's very important to remember that what goes up does come down. And the way markets work, uh, if asset prices didn't change, you couldn't have that arbitrage kind of buying low and selling high or selling high and buying low. So that's the nature of investments. It's about keeping a cool head, uh, getting started, getting into something that works for you. Um, and, uh, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, um, there's loads of information out there. You can do it yourself, but we always kind of suggest the clients get professional advice. Uh, I know a fair amount about taxes. I've worked with accountants for years. I still pay an accountant to my, to my accounts because he's keeping up to date with legislation. Uh, legislation. He knows what the tricks are. He knows what new things are. We can claim for and what we can't claim for. Um, similarly, I, I expect him to kind of listen to my advice. This is what I do. What I do. My team do day in day out. We're aware of what works. We're aware of what other clients have done. Uh, we've seen all the frauds. Um, we can see them coming a mile away. And it's, it's, it always amazes me that people kind of get into it, get taken in, and then we kind of get, have to come in and pick up the pieces afterwards. So if, if you haven't done it before. Speak to myself, one of my team. Um, we'll gladly answer any questions. I've got some cards here. Uh, ping me an email if you've got any questions. More than happy to just give a short answer back and, and help you on your on your journey. All right.